It's the Score North Twin Show. Gentlemen, we have some positive Twins news to react to here, okay? Unless Judd wants to take a giant piss on it. No, 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 not no. No interest in doing that. I'm excited about this. You're all the rage on social media yesterday. Declan put a couple clips out on Scorner Social of you responding to my how do you think the season will finish question by going on a six-minute rant about Jorge Polanco's third base defense, which was awesome. He sped the video up, and you can find that on uh, Scorner Social. (laughs) And then there was another one, too, where I... I asked you, would you be mad if the Twins, like, would you, how did I phrase it? Would you be happy if the Twins won a playoff game? And you paused and said, it depends on how they win it. (laughs) You simply just asked Black and White, yeah, will they win a playoff game? Will you be happy? And then you went six minutes on defense. (laughs) And Uh, then you know what? Last night didn't help, by the way. (laughs) Then last night they came out, Joe Ryan got blasted and gave up seven (laughs) runs early. So I feel fine about everything I said yesterday. You know, I was thinking, do we do the what's wrong with Joe Ryan episode? I don't know. And then like 30 minutes before we flip these mics on here for the Scorner Twin Show, which, by the way, we just want the Twins to win a playoff game. And so people are saying, you got to raise the bar. We will once they win a playoff game. Then we'll raise the bar more. But let's start with step one. Uh, some interesting breaking Twins news came across here just before we hit record, gentlemen. He's coming. He's not here yet. But the former number eight overall draft pick, the 18th ranked prospect across Major League Baseball's top prospect list, according to MLB.com, Brooks Lee has just been promoted from double A to triple A. He's going from Wichita to St. Paul, Mm. Mm. and he has been absolutely mashing the last, well, the last two months for sure. Uh, he, He got off to kind of a slow start the first three weeks, but his OPS is like 1,100 Over the past uh, three or four weeks, he's driving the ball to all fields. On the season, he has 31 doubles, 11 home runs, and uh, only 63 strikeouts in 399 plate appearances. So, Brooks Lee, man, he's a shortstop, but he did play a game at third base. You know, at some point, they may have to find a new position for him. There's a chance he could be up this year if he keeps mashing like this. It wouldn't shock me, but how do you guys... uh, I know we're kind of sitting here in like the post trade deadline malaise. They just got beat again last night. They're just clinging to this bad division lead, but you know, there is some hope with a guy like Brooks Lee now knocking on the door at triple a. I love this. This is actually good news. This is something fun to talk about. This is the type of thing. Yes. That Brooks Lee, (laughs) but yes, the twins have a prospect left. His name is Brooks Lee. He was not traded for an injured pitcher. They and have a you know, prospect they, left. They, they have, have something fun to talk about. I love, yes. I love that line. They have something so, fun to talk about. So actually, I am, I am uh, trying to be creative here, and if if you can see this, I'm trying to draw up a potential hmm. um, defensive chart for Opening Day 2024. Okay. Because I think Brooks Lee, I think it's very realistic with his trajectory now to say that he is in it the Opening Day lineup potentially to make his big league debut. Yeah. next uh well, next april or march they could i know you don't want to talk about this year's playoffs much right now but they could pull an alex kirloff with him too i sure. would probably do it before the playoffs but like yeah they gave kirloff at bats in a playoff game for the first time so he to me like if this offense continues to kind of just be meh i would if, if he mashes triple a i wouldn't be shy about starting that clock september or october of 2023 sure sure but anyway there. opening day next year okay Brooks Lee at third, Carlos Correa at short, Royce Lewis at second, Alex Kirloff at first, Trevor Larnick in left, Matt Walner, who has an absolute cannon in right. He's got a right fielder's arm. Jeffers Jeffers catching. I mean, ideally, Buxton's back in center. And like, so Polanco, I mean, it, ideally, perfect world. Is Don't probably you just a, have to try it, right? Just be like, hey, man, well, what, what are we doing? Here's the question. Like, Polanco now does not have a position, but could he could he play some second for sure? But also, I, I really want to free up the DH spot to use it rotationally a little bit more. Yeah, mostly for Julian, but, but also rotationally. Yes, and, right? and Julian, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. But I think so, Lewis yeah. plays second. 
So Brooks, yeah. So Brooks Lee, yeah. It's kind of like if can Julian play the outfield? Oh, or, God. or is that a disaster? Can, can, well, I mean, Lewis, they had Lewis playing center field, you know, for a while before he tore his. But ACL. I'm saying spring training. <laughs> back, back to your Polanco point, which I, I think is a, a good point. Polanco playing third right now drives me crazy. But I, yeah, I agree with your point, Phil. If you give a guy like Polanco an entire spring, I think he's fine there. But well, I do Polanco's think Brooks Lee would probably start. Polanco so banged up. I mean, if. Here's the thing, too, about his contract. So Polanco has a $10.5 million vesting option yep. with a $1 million buyout. Uh, the option vests with 550 plate appearances in 2023. He's missed a huge chunk of the year. So where is he at right now? He's at 149. He mathematically will not get to the vesting number. Okay. Does and So this is where, I'm, you know, I don't know. Does he... Do the twins still have a team option if they want to exercise that? Or does he just, I, my guess is it's a team option that vests for the player if he hits a certain plate appearance. But if he doesn't, can the twins, the twins can then do a $1 million buyout potentially, or they could just bring him back for the 10 million. So we'd have to get clarification here, but there's a chance that you just might be, he's Got 30 them. and he's banged up all the time. Or does he come back and he's just like your super utility player who plays all three positions as a backup? You know, because he's not the and, same player he was a couple of years ago. And Kepler's probably gone too, correct? Yeah, he's a, yeah. There's no way you exercise okay. the team option, right? And so, so Brooks Lee, I agree, has to be starting, unless he really sputters at AAA, I think he has to be starting opening day 2024. And I, I'm just kind of making a list too, kind of similar to yours, but a little bit different of, all right, let's look ahead here, uh, kind of starting this year, but also looking into 2024. Who am I building around if I'm the Twins right now? Who am I now? The trade deadline's over, so this is your pool of players for now. Maybe you do something in the offseason, but, you know, this is probably kind of a, an exhale offseason for the Twins. They might add a pitcher. So, you know, they're going to lose Maeda. They're going to lose Sonny Gray. So you, you might look to, like, sign a free agent pitcher. But right, I'm looking at the position players who are 25 and younger. So Brooks Lee... Edward Julian, Matt Walner, Royce Lewis, Alex Kirloff. Uh, Larnick is 26. He's a former first-round pick. I'd like to see him get some extended run even this year. Let's see what he's got, man. He's 26. Thank you. You know? Yes. And then Carlos Correa is kind of your main veteran, and he's having the worst year of his career, but he's under contract for 30-some million dollars a year, right? So, to me, that's kind of your nucleus right now. And Brooks Lee going to AAA now after mashing AA, jo he joins that discussion and that group. And then the pitching side, it's kind of – God, you got to figure out what's going on with Joe Ryan. Is there something physically wrong? Is he just like tipping his pitches? Pablo Lopez is 27. Bailey Ober's 27. So like these are kind of the eight or nine guys, most of them 25 and under that I'm, I'm starting with that. I'm probably not trading much from that group at this point going into next year. And how can you supplement them is kind of the question and make them fit together too. Cause there's a lot of like, position duplication here or like left-handed corner b bat duplication Julian, you know potentially exactly. Julian like where does he play so yeah but Brooks Lee joining that party is an is a really interesting development potentially this year like in the next two months yeah it wouldn't shock me at all if he even gets promoted at some point this year he's gonna get all of August um I was even texting with someone in St. Paul last week asking like where, where in this when is this kid gonna get called up at this point he's raking double a and they said, I would be, guess by mid to late August. Now it's the beginning of August, so he's here. He's going to be here for the last six, seven weeks of the AAA season. Um, but it wouldn't shock me at all uh, if he got promoted, especially even if Royce Lewis, unfortunately, has a setback in his oblique and Polanco's defense is not there. And to be honest, I'd rather you throw in this uber prospect that could give you a little bit of jolt in this lineup. I mean, look, the best guys right now in the Twins lineup are the young players. Mm -hmm. It's Kirloff. It's Edward Julian. It's Matt Walner. It, it's not veteran guys that have been around the block a lot. The, the things that have been saving your lineup has been youth. So you may as well build around that and use that to your advantage, especially if you're trying to make some noise in the playoffs. If they move Larnick, it, is it, do you think it's more probable that they try and see if Julian can play left or Royce Lewis can play left and leave Julian for all his deficiencies, but who knows, perhaps he can improve himself during the winter, leave Julian at second. What do you think? Man. It's so tough. It's so tough in the middle of a season to to make an infielder grab an outfielder's glove. I know Nick Gordon kind of did it, and he 
but even like Nick Gordon got pretty good. But in I'm the saying outfield, with the early on, Nick fell. Gordon was kind of a. Oh, you're saying for next year? Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. I'm. I, dude, but they're going to have this problem this this summer still, maybe. Yeah, I got no. That's faith what in I was me. thinking about. Yeah, no, but I'm I'm saying if, if you have a full spring training to have a player work in the outfield who's probably not familiar with it, do you try Julian, who I think can improve himself, uh, but is a butcher right now at second base far too often, or? Royce Lewis, who I think has the athletic ability, to, despite the fact he got hurt playing center field a year ago, I think he's got the ability to probably adapt to either position. You, I mean, you could experiment with it, but if, I mean, Matt Walner needs to play somewhere. Alex Kirloff needs to play somewhere. Yep. And as of right now, Trevor Larnick, a former first-round pick who's showing major flashes, has to play somewhere. And you only have one DH spot, two corner outfield spots, and a first base slot, so... I guess if you, I guess you could maybe train up Julian to grab a corner outfielder's goal, but you also need a center fielder. I don't, I don't know that like Michael well, Taylor, he's in his early thirties, and Buxton hasn't played center field. That's the so. million dollar discussion, though. Like, what do you do? I, I think that what we've seen here, and it sucks, but it's just the truth of, of this. I think this Buxton as your sole DH thing doesn't work. Yeah, you, it, you'd really like some DH, unless you have Shohei Otani on your team. Right. And it's like, all right, we're yeah. just going to put that guy's our DH. But and... can you just come back <laughs> in March and be like, all right, Byron's back for year two as a DH, fingers crossed again. I, he, that, he, to yeah. me, that's not, a, that's not a plan. That's a hope. He hasn't been a, a good enough one. hitter to be right. a DH. And, and and most of his value anyways, though, his career has been center field. So. I don't know. This is the thing. I think we all kind of figured, yeah, okay, easing him in. Michael Taylor's going to play some center, but eventually, like in May, they'll right. start running Buxton back out there. And we're sitting here in August, and they haven't. And they haven't been transparent about sort of over the long haul. Is he done playing center field, period? Because, by the way, even if he was a center fielder, you could argue that there's probably only a two or three year clock on him at his age because he's, he's going to be 30 years old next year, right? You know, you get to your early 30s, Torrey Hunter, Kirby Puckett, you're kicking over to right field at some point because you're not fast enough anymore. So, or do you put, or to your point for what you just said, Phil, does Buxton go to right field and you try that? But that's not, it's not like, it's more of a, a standing for an hour and a half thing for him. It doesn't matter if you're in center field or right field. No, you know? I know, but are we, but like, is this the plan in perpetuity until he's done now? Like, that. that's my question. Because, yeah. You're really hamstrung if that's the plan. Yeah, I wouldn't even uh, – this is probably not going to happen, but I know you keep talking about 2024. But in the next two months, this team is trying to make a push in the playoffs, and they might call Brooks Lee up to be in this lineup. And one of the only ways you can unclog this thing is to move Byron Buxton to center field this season. And I don't think, I don't think that's on the table, but let's say you yeah. don't and he's your DH, and you're trying to rev it because you know that if he gets hot, he can carry a lineup, and so you're not just going to bench him. You're going to put him in that DH spot a handful of times a week. If Royce Lewis comes back, and you're not benching Correa, even though he's having the worst year of his career, and, and Brooks Lee is on fire, and you're looking for a spot to call him up, and Julian's one of your best hitters, <laughs> you need that DH spot to free up. In a perfect world, you'd slide Buxton to center field for like four or five games a week. And now you've got, you know, Correa's at short, but now you've got second, third, and the DH spot to kind of move around Julian, Brooks Lee, Polanco, and Royce Lewis, right? And, dude, I'll, I'll go back to the Royce Lewis outfield thing. He's athletic enough. He picked it up enough for them to put him in a major league, well, like, what, a couple major league games? He played outfield in, in the minor leagues, too. You know, are they are they spooked because he tore his knee playing outfield? Or do they still view him as a guy that, like, you know what? We need a spot for Brooks over here. You know, we need a spot for Ju Julian is going to be the second baseman. Like, would they ever put Royce Lewis back out there? These are intriguing. I would even call them champagne problems in some ways with these young infielders that, that might start bubbling up before the end of this regular season, so... I don't know what their their stomach is for putting Buxton back in the outfield. That's an well, interesting. And if they're not going to, are they? And he he has started to hit hit a bit, but he what set out last night's game because of hamstring tightness. I think off the double he hit um, a couple of days ago in St. Louis. But are they prepared to sit Buxton more? Does Buxton have to play yeah. all the time? I mean, I just I have so many questions because it feels like the lineup construction 
is so limited right now because of the of you know Buxton has to play or has to DH. Okay, well yeah. that's great, but you've got a lot of guys here. You got a lot of moving parts. It's like you're not giving. It's almost like they're not giving themselves an opportunity to create pleasant problems because of the stubbornness of no, this is how we're going to do it. And to your point on Korea, it is weird. It felt like a year ago, and I don't know if the plan changed because they changed athletic trainers or what. It felt like a year ago they they had a lot more interest in quote getting Korea off his feet, right? Like he'd sit out Sunday home games, and I complained about it sometimes because I'm like, why not just sit the guy on the road? Yeah. People actually pay to see him. Now it feels like, and they did take him out in the fifth down, I think, seven runs last night. But now it feels like there's less willingness to sit him when there's probably more of a case with his season to do exactly that. Yeah, it does feel like there. And maybe it's him pushing to just play every day, and he wants to fight through the four-month slump that he's in. You know, that might be part of it, too. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's really tough when, gosh, like, you've got two other organizational young shortstops in Royce Lewis and Brooks Lee right now, but you're paying all this money to Carlos Correa, and you can't... So you're now you're, like, displacing your two best young players to different positions, and you'd almost, like, in retrospect, based on kind of where they are, Correa hasn't helped you get to this point. He's a good defensive shortstop, but he's been shipwrecking you offensively. You know, you almost would have been better off not signing him, not being the team that was the fallback oh, yeah. option, because by now, because then Royce Lewis would, would have stuck at short. Mackie Brooks, said that. Bro, so then the left side of your infield would then be Hold Brooks on. Lee and Royce Lewis, right? I'm going to tweet about what you just said and rip you. Well, I think people would agree with me. No, you're. Oh, on Twitter they pro- they won't, but you're right. You're, yes, you're. You you're think, exactly you think, right. You think people would fight me on the Twins would have been better oh, off not twins, signing Carlos Correa? Some Twins fans absolutely will. Yes, but Bring I agree with you. You're complete. You're completely right. Yeah, the if he could have passed either of those damn physicals with the Giants or Mets, you're not wrong about that at all. Because you wouldn't have any of these issues. You, I mean, you'd still have that the, was the uh, plan. Keep you know the mind, Edward that, Julian concrete glove issue, but like you know. going into 2022 when Correa pleasantly signed in, in March, right? That was the entire plan. Mm-hmm. A year of Carlos. At that point in time. Uh, Royce then would come back in 2023 and be your starting shortstop. That was the entire plan. This was never like supposed to be a long-term marriage. They Carlos, unfortunately for him, I guess, just backed into it. You know, in retrospect, uh, maybe they should have entertained uh, trading him last summer to get some young okay. assets. Again, I'm going to jump back on Twitter. Yeah, so, he's an idiot. I can't it believe it either. <laughs> How can you suggest that they're going to actually trade him? No, because it's a he's clearly you using right. the twins to try and sign somewhere else, which he which he did in retrospect. So, all right, well, yeah, well, let us know in the YouTube comment sections. Am I crazy for suggesting they'd be better off without Carlos Correa going forward if they had never signed him? Yep. I don't think it's a hot take. Like, their two best but, young players are freaking shortstops, and I do agree on on this. There is some definite reason for optimism. Yes, I said that regarding the Twins' young group. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. so uh, coming up next, down. we spend a day with Brooks Lee and his family <laughs> as they don't use any curse words. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We might need some curse words for the Immaculate Grid today, depending. I have not seen it yet, I but uh, we're going to get into this thing. Presented by our new friends at Burger Press in Edina, you guys. Thanks. Nice. Get ready to salivate. This is oh, the score God. lunch outing from a couple weeks ago. And not only do they have perfectly crafted burgers from the meat to the toppings to the bun, they also have the best fries, those crinkle cut fries for my money. Not too soggy, not too crispy, just right. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got the Nathan's hot dogs, maybe a Chicago style for you, maybe a Polish <laughs> sausage, milkshakes. Mm. And this is an independently owned and operated uh, I was going to say restaurant. It's kind of a, it is a restaurant, but it's also like kind of fast, casual. It's very like snappy. You don't have to, if you have only like a half hour window for lunch, swing on over there. And it's owned and operated by Minnesota sports fans who also love scoring. So you can support them, support us. Burger Press in Edina, just off 494 and France Avenue. Let's put five minutes on the clock here, gentlemen. This is our Immaculate Grid Challenge. 
And I think like, most of you have kind of seen or heard us playing this the last couple of weeks. We have a blast. We have to go nine for nine here. So Declan's going to pull up what looks like a baseball tic-tac-toe square. And we're looking to fill the squares with these combinations, as you see on your screen on YouTube here. A giant who was once a guardian or an Indian, a giant who was once a Red Sox, and then a giant who won rookie of the year. A Cincinnati Red who was once a Guardian or an Indian. A Cincinnati Red who was a Red Sox. And then a Cincinnati Red who won Rookie of the Year. And then a 300 batting average season who played for the Guardians or the Indians. A 300 hitter in a season that played for the Red Sox. And then a 300 season who also won Rookie of the Year. I will tell you guys, I am horrible at Rookie of the Year. So Did, did Nob Knobloch won Rookie of the Year, right? He yes. did, right? Should I put and five minutes won, on the and, clock and, here? And did he... Okay, yep. And did three, he two, hit 300? Go. And did he hit 300? Because this will be an incredible pull. Oh, my God. Now I think we're going to have that one. I don't remember let's, if he hit 300. I don't one. remember if he right. hit 300. I can tell you right now, well, Pujols, Giant... Pujols did yep. both. There, right? There's a few options. I think even Ichiro, too. But, Fred Lynn, right? Um, For Red Sox, Giants, Cody Ross, the World Series hero for the Giants, and then went to Boston. Cody Ross. Cody okay. Ross. We're going to trust Dex on this one. Okay. For, yeah, nice job, Dex. For Reds and Cleveland, Buddy Bell, B-U-D-D-Y, Bell. I love yes. the old school. The old uh, school. What, what did you say? What was Judd? Sorry. Buddy, B-U-D-D-Y, Bell. Bell. From 72 to 89. Yep. Okay. 2%. Sweet. Um, a Red Sox who was a Red Bronson Arroyo, right? I was going to say that. That's, that's right. good. I just throw that down, yes. Although that's, that's probably not going to help us on the the rarity score. No, but, but we have it. We have it. That's That'll probably be the most common one, I'll be completely honest. Um, we could save it. We could save it. I've Red Sox down here. Red Sox who was a Red. Is there anybody from? Well, let's come back to that because we have Arroyo in our back pocket. Okay. Okay. Did, did Pablo Sandoval go to the Guardians? I don't think so. Right, he went to the Red Sox. No, no, he went back to the Giants. I don't remember him being a Guardian. A Giant who was. Oh, a how about uh, didn't Ellis Burks play for both the Giants and the Guardians oh, that's a, back in the day? Ooh, I remember him because he was Boston originally, right? And I remember him in Cleveland. Yeah, I, I might be wrong on that. Don't. Okay, so San Francisco and Cleveland. Had, does were, Kel, was there any does Kel play for the Giants? Uh that sounds right. Yeah, oh, boy. Um, that sounds right. Would be any slappy pitchers? Yeah, like the Mike Leak. Oh, oh God, Mike no, Leak. No, no, stop with Mike Leak. I screwed that one last time. Yeah, don't don't give me Mike Leak anymore. San Francisco and Cleveland. Ellis, I think you might be right on Burks, Phil. All right, well, how about Rookie of the Year for San Francisco? Buster, right? Buster, Buster Posey. Uh, Posey? Did he win Rookie? I'm so, dude, I am so bad with Rookie of the Year. I'm so I'm just going to trust one. you guys. All right, I'm going right. to go with Buster. You guys go with Buster? Let's I mean, fire I, away. Yeah, let's fire away. Sure. Yeah, 70 There we go. I mean, I... Okay. Yeah. Okay, a red who won rookie of the year. Chapman. Did, Pete, Larkin? did, did Pete Rose win it? Chapman? Araldus Chapman? Oh, I don't know about that. He came in Barry, 104 Barry, miles. Barry, Barry Larkin did, right? Nice. I don't know. Some of these guys come up and they they suck for like a year and then they. Um, red who won rookie? We got two and a half minutes, so we're sitting pretty good. Red we want to do the three. Should we do the 300 hitters here? Yeah. Okay, let's do, uh, so for the Guardians, we could do any number of 300 hitters from, like, the 90s. Like, Robbie Alomar, right? There's um, Carlos Baerga. How about him? Judd? Didn't Carlos yeah. Baerga hit 300 for the Guardians? Um, I think, you, you know who I think did as well? Mike Hargrove, who managed him. But Baerga, yeah. but if Baerga. You're, if you're sure, that's a more rare score. I'm I'm like eighty percent sure that Bayerga hit three hundred at some point. All right, point. yeah, try try this one, Mike Hargrove. Hargrove, yep, yeah, yes. point three percent, good nice stuff, job, Doug. dude. Human rain delay. Three hundred for Boston. <laughs> um, there's a lot of options. Like, I mean, Boggs is I mean, the it, Ortiz Boggs. Boggs is the highest Noma. one. Oh, let's let's go Yaz. You want to do the three hundred one, right? Carly Ostremski. <laughs> there it is. Right. Yep. Yeah. Well, what's 5%, the percent? Five percent. Yeah. Nice, 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 nice. You got that down. Okay. Um, so a rookie of the year who hit 300. Well, we're back to that. So pool holes, you said Fred Ichiro, Lynn. right? Ichiro. Did, Let's didn't do Ichiro. He I, Ichiro. Yeah. I really want to try knob block, but. Dude, if you it. try knob block and it's wrong, this whole show is going to be mad at you the rest well, of the day. We have a minute left to fill four squares. So we got to get Ichiro. We, go we know here. Ichiro. Because he, he won it 
and there was all this consternation about it. We'll look up Knoblock later, just to yep. validate you. Okay, let's okay. go Arroyo for the red. Uh, let's fill a box here. We yep. got 50 seconds. Oh boy, we're taking it down. Gotta do it. Nice, so, nice, okay. nice, nice work. And Rookie then, uh, of the year for the Reds. Yeah. I like Chapman. You guys. Oh, like Johnny Bench. Johnny, Johnny Bench. Bench. Jonathan Bench. 35 seconds left here. Need a guardian. So the names we threw out were Ellis Burks and Omar Vizquel at the end of his career. I, I why, think Burke, why do I think he played for the Giants I, at the end of his career? No, I'm with Phil. I, I think Omar's I, right here. I think you're right on, oh, on both. I, I think he's right on Burks, too. So, yeah, just pick one. Okay. Sorry if I'm wrong. All right, here we go. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Nice work. We got it. Nice work, boys. Nice work. 10 <laughs> seconds to spare. How's our score? Nice job, dudes. Uh, it was 176. Uh, for rookie of the years, there's only six for the Giants, eight for the Reds. Let's see if I don't. Sometimes it doesn't show you when you click on these things. Yeah, I, I saw that list that one time when I was in studio. Chuck sort of Knobloch, by the way. Jack. Oh, we would have been wrong on Nobby. No, he did. He did not hit 300 in his. It rookie says all year. 107 players have a 300 average and one rookie of the year. You can oh, see so the they have ha they below. have to have had both. I get it. I was thinking a 300 oh. hitter in their rookie of the year season. Yep, I didn't. I. Oh wait, it wasn't. Nobby yeah. was rookie of the year, but he hit 281 in his rookie year. You know, oh, who, I thought it was hit, in your rookie. Se I thought it was oh. in your rookie season too. Me too. Also, oh, okay. got. They have guys like pitchers qualified, like Jeremy Hellickson hit 300 and also That's... won Rookie of the Year. Okay. He would have qualified oh, for this. Well, I didn't realize that. That's sort I didn't, of. I, I didn't realize I'm not a big either. fan of that. That's sort of stupid. Interesting. Wow, awesome dudes. All right, we are immaculate. Good we work. are. We are here. Also, a shout out to our friends at Power Lodge too for helping power this. Nice. Uh, this Twins trivia or this baseball trivia extravaganza. So it's the 25th year of bringing action and excitement to Minnesota as your go-to destination for all things marine and power sports. So what they're doing is 25 days of deals on the latest off-road and on-road vehicles, boats, and supplies from the top brands in power sports. 25 days of back-to-back -back incredible offers. You don't want to miss this. Mark your calendars for the 25th anniversary of Power Lodge. Go to PowerLodge.com to find out more information. Mm -hmm. Th throttle therapy, baby. You damn right. All right, guys. See you next time on the Scorner Twin Show.